Greetings and salutations. I am Venus Youngblood. This is an anti-capitalist guided meditation. I like insight meditation most, so that's what we'll be doing today. I designed this meditation to help folks break through the flow and work cycles that we find ourselves in especially some of the shittier and more complicated parts of living and struggling in a capitalist society. Insight meditation is not a spiritual exercise and has recorded benefits to one's prefrontal cortex both during and after meditation is complete. It is done by drawing attention to a specific thing or thought you may have slowly through breathing exercises and visualization, one develops a safe space for oneself. This allows you to feel and cope with your own emotions, even in their toxicity. Today's meditation will be centered around resilience. Here are three options for breathing exercises that you may use throughout this meditation. I shall remind you to breathe purposefully throughout the course of this meditation as well. Option A, resistance can be created by pursing the lips, placing the tip of the tongue against the inside of your upper teeth, hissing through, through the clenched teeth, tightening the throat muscles, narrowing the space between the vocal cords. This can also be achieved through an external object like a straw. Option B, as you breathe in, Imagine you are moving your breath to the top of your head. As you breathe out, imagine you are moving your breath to the base of your spine. Each time you breathe in, move the breath to the top of the head. Each time you breathe out, down again to the base of the spine. That is my personal favorite breathing exercise. Option C. This is likely the most common form of breathing during insight meditation. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. If you find it difficult to hold your breath, please use options either A or B, using an external object such as a straw or taking deep breaths that span from your crown to the base of your spine. Please begin breathing comfortably as I read. I will begin and close on the same quote from Peter Kropotkin. Each individual is a cosmos of organs. Each organ is a cosmos of cells. Each cell is a cosmos of infinitely smaller ones. And in this complex world, the well-being of the whole depends entirely on the sum of well-being enjoyed by each of the least microscopic particles of organized matter. A whole revolution is thusly produced in the philosophy of life. Breathing with heavy volume, your toes numbly cover themselves in warmth, combining as if dipped in summer sand. The sense is within you, and you can do more with this numbness. But first, allow it to stir your twitching. As you breathe in as much grit as you can smell in its poetry. Stay still through bronze thought and vision amongst the darkness of your closed eyes. Allow its cloudy, shadowed colors to morph in gusts just as fast as thoughts may come, in all their fearful force. Let this next gust be one that agitates the waves of your heart a bit less, so it does not impair your rhythm or delay transformation. A curtain of vision still covers your eyes, but soon it shall be shattered with color. Later they shall open. But for now, those colors are scattered and blotched, orange and red, brown, these things glow amongst the dark. 
they are golden worlds revolving and shining within your mind in flight. These are all points on the infinite, like a thousand dawns in a single night. Through the darkness that covers its majority, they move, gloomy or bright, these blotches move in accordance to corresponding light. Breathing in a somewhat glassy ocean at the whirlpool's depths open by your tender hand, slowly create your own light, brilliant, into fragile, unconscious coves of thought, where limbs are warming, and you find yourself and the terror within yourself, confronting that smaller being inside of your body without speaking it ruminates an indefinable something as it is red hot and is able to recollect and dominate it as a weary small thing growing pale and wandering companionless even the self has a bright shadow but find your greater self drinking from the sun's inspiring radiance and the wind swept strongly from the shore for it's your cloudy blotchy mind that has created its cyan perception. Hold yourself as these waves arise higher and higher still. Tell yourself each drop of water is a thought soon to pass, soon to dust of no relation to me. They are externalities and cannot move my body's actions. Feel your smaller magma cool as you sit in your seat, but you shall plant new seeds to grow in mulchy earth of truth with plenty for all and well-being for all. Its disorder will bring plenty to contrasting a misdirected mass and creating a new defiant voice, searching, rolling, flashing, thundering, still well supported against the cracks and lashes of a shore tended by very few whose sands once soothed but now have become immaterial. The numbness before turning to cold inside all of your veins, through your fleshy arms, still supported by the weight of the greater self, swifter than they adapt to lifting fragments of human shards, deeply satisfying and warming, maintaining that deep breathing outwards from your still cloudy mind, expunging, plowing through thoughts as hard as steel cuts, plowing through thoughts with new heat and new breath. That once gray and caged individual has been quickly redacted, replaced with a fire of rebellion that breathes new life. It's 
individual is a cosmos of organs. Each organ is a cosmos of cells. Each cell is a cosmos of infinitely smaller ones. And in this complex world, the well-being of the whole depends entirely on the sum of well-being enjoyed by each of the least microscopic particles of organized matter. A whole revolution is thusly produced in the philosophy of life.